How's everybody doing? I hope well. Hope very well, despite this nonsense. And it's just, uh, it just continues to get more and more frustrating, this whole entire ordeal. Certainly as uh, more evidence to the contrary is put out. Let me just get right into it. So, what we have here, excuse me. a total since these mass lockdowns in America of 26 million people have been put out of work one way or another. And I always have to put the disclaimer there because that's all we know about. You know that there are certain sites that are you can't even get on uh, and even file for unemployment. So that's of what we know. There's probably more than that, probably well more than that. And that's a significant part of the population that is put out of work for this. Now, before I talk about some of the other things, the things that frustrate me about when we mention this, this dichotomy of people that have been preaching this doom and gloom, shut everything down, is that they've created this notion that it's like they use these catchphrases like profit or people over profit. And they use catchphrases that try to make it seem as if if you highlight the economy and the importance of it, then and you want to save it, <laughs> then you don't you want people to die or something like that. You don't care about people. And we have uh, so much evidence that shows that there's a correlation, actually, between a lot of self-harm, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, depression that's associated with being unemployed. So to act like there's, there's absolutely no medical kickback from that is completely nonsense. And as I've mentioned in some of the streams before, they expect the people that are against these just mass sweeping indiscriminate lockdowns, such as myself, they try to paint us as these people that don't care about people and want, want harm being done to people, want people's grandmothers to die and all sorts of nonsense. While they won't take responsibility for the rising amounts of, uh, again, those, those depression, the, the child abuse and all of, the, all of this negative stuff that is generally associated with this and is happening even right now. So the dichotomy is dishonest, of course it is, but that's what they try to do to create this sort of false moral high ground that they act as if they have, but you can't have in the event that you just see that there's a frigging problem with putting so many people out of work at the same time. And you're seeing people, and I've seen people come to the other side because they thought they were immune to being laid off, fired, furloughed, what have you. And I said, as long as this continues to go on, people that thought they were on they were untouched, even in essential businesses, are going to be laid off, fired, furloughed, and so forth. The reason being is economics, you can't turn it on and off. It's interconnected. It's a machine. The economy, that is. So just basically not allowing entire industries to be able to function that money's not circulating okay money's not circulating and people don't have the money they have to be way more scarce than what they were and they have to spend it on other things instead of your business even in people that work uh essential businesses and as they you guys found out then the, the those loans were gonna exhaust almost immediately. That's how many people have been put out of work. And you saw people that were getting it that didn't, that you believed it needed. Hey, this is government for you. Try to tell you idiots about this. But what perhaps makes this most criminal is that they acted fairly fast in America's case. I know a lot of people think they were lagging, but that's just not true. They acted fairly fast in America's case as these bandwagon sort of states just started doing these shelter and play stay at home orders and so forth back to back to back to back to back before there were these, these, uh, these deaths. 
now again we don't know how long it's been here i've talked about last stream and how one of the i believe it was in was it la county or was it santa it might have been santa clara county actually where they did an autopsy and there was a body uh the person that died back in february like early february like february the 6th um, i think it was three of them actually but the earliest one was february the 6th and that tested positive for the modello virus interesting so we don't really know how long it's been here. Now, I would think that anybody would understand that it, that it would have had to have been here a lot earlier than the first positive con, uh, confirmed novel coronavirus case here in America. When you Even when you consider the thousands of people that travel to and from China uh, since what, November or when, what have you. But they were so quick to do those that sweeping indiscriminate lockdown so even if you were like all right well we had to do it we didn't know it was new we had, we didn't really know even though you did know uh you had evidence uh, before it hit america in terms of an outbreak you had evidence that basically said the same thing that it doesn't impact everybody the same way um there's as asymptomatic people but more more importantly when it comes to hospitalization rates um, the people that are generally there are older people um, as well as people that have these underlying disease, but most of them, the vast majority of them are in terms of high, having the higher hospitalization rate. Um, we talk about New York City all the time. It's generally the older people. So it was it, it was indiscriminate. It, it was it may indiscriminately get it, but it's very discriminate in terms of how it impacts you. There's a, there's a slant there. OK, so even with all that considered, uh, all those things considered, they still remain in these lockdowns and you have people having these talks but they're lagging their feet of reopening but they weren't lagging the feet when it came to shutting things down more evidence continues to come out there's been two ma two major studies out of coming out of the west coast in santa clara county as well as um L L la county usc studies at stanford study which had Johnny Anitas which is also a part of a JB Char I talked about both of these uh, doctors here and what they've both been confirming is that the there's a high there's a higher well a higher percentage of people that are infected already now they may not know it um and they may had never had really they had some let's say mild sense but we know that's how it how it works is some people are going to get this and they're going to brush it off uh, they're not going to need to be in the hospital the vast majority of people are definitely under the under certain ages such as in my age group the vast majority of us will never need hospitalization in any event that we get it so that's positive news um, the anti the antibody test in santa clara said the same thing they actually said that it was uh they concluded, I believe it was 50, let me see where it's at. Uh, where is it at? I know it's like 50 to 85 fold when it comes to, yeah, 50 to 85 fold more, number, more than the number of confirmed cases. Now that's positive news unless you were preaching doom and gloom. Now if you were preaching doom and gloom, it still should be positive news, but if you if you feel like you know you got that that the ego thing right where oh man I may have been wrong on this and you got an egg on your face, this is what happens, and uh, you may want to continue to kick the can down the road. They've been talking about for for, for months this whole well it's gonna come this 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 next next uh this, this spike right the peak the peak then it's gonna get really crazy and then. It, Either the peak came and passed already, or it just never really hit the hit the level of of, uh, of let's say these high high deaths that you would have assumed. We know that the vast, when it comes to a percentage of of the deaths, New York, especially New York City, when it comes to America, holds the holds most of them. I've, I've discussed how here. Um, in terms of Texas, what we're experiencing is completely different than what what uh, the rest of the country, not necessarily the rest of the country, more so United States, uh, oh, New York, in comparison to New York, excuse me, it's completely different, even though we're more populated. 
So as you can see, you know, New York has 15,000 deaths, just using this as an example, whereas Texas only has 517, even though Texas is more populated. It's almost like population density and other types of things. Demographics actually have a lot to do with this. Okay? So the evidence is coming out. There's been st similar antibody studies that have come out uh, out of Germany. Uh, we knew that a lot of those, some of those tests have been done in Iceland and other other forms, other countries and stuff that are basically saying the same thing, that there is a way more people infected than they originally thought, which makes the virus, and John Ioannidis said this, it makes the virus way less deadly than what they initially anticipated. That is a positive thing, but... If you were all in on doom and gloom and you now have egg on your face and you won't concede that point, then you're making everybody else's life miserable because you just want to come out. on. This is why so many people are, are all in on Sweden having – because Sweden is one of the European countries who, in terms of its uh, population density, uh, 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 it, it, you can you – can, kind of compare it to even some of the American states, like maybe Michigan, uh, not necessarily the countries around it, um, but in terms of like the population density of, uh, of the population in terms of Sweden uh, and it being a, it's unique. Let's just say that because it's a country that did not do the mass forms of lockdowns. They did have f some restrictions. It wasn't just a, 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 like completely left up to the industries and the private private individuals, but they they didn't shut everything down to the capacity that the other countries uh, did in the bandwagon, including America. And you get people, you go read those articles, right? They're just anticipating. They've been anticipating for a month this whole, oh man, everybody's going to die. They're going to, they're going to have, not everybody, but you get it. You know, it's going to, oh, this, this is so bad. They shouldn't do this. They're costing lives and, and they're going to have it worst off. And, what we're seeing is that they don't have any more, let's say, let's say it's not really significantly higher in terms of deaths per million in comparison to some of those countries that were hit hard that had those mass amounts of, uh, of lockdown, such as uh, Belgium or Italy or uh, Spain or even the UK, they're under them. And, and they're, they're actually very comparable when you consider like Sweden has 198 deaths per million and the United States, which is behind it has 149. So then you have to start having that discussion of, well, wait a minute. If they're even floating around the death and so, so forth, and they're not being overwhelmed. This is the whole point of the uh, flatten the curve. They're not being overwhelmed. Uh, their hospitals are fine as we know them right now for the most part. But even if they're floating around some of these countries that, that, did do the mass lockdown, such as the United States, what that is, at, it's not a direct comparison, right? Because America's huge, right? It doesn't, you know. But what it's showing us, at least in some capacity, that lockdown doesn't equal less deaths, necessarily. It's not the end all, let's just say that, as well as the opposite can be said. It's no conclusive evidence about that. It's no conclusive evidence um, as you see, and this is why I think people want to sweep them to fail, so they can't point to them like, oh, and it's funny, these are the people that, that care so much about saving lives and they're preaching doom and gloom on Sweden and they're anticipating that these bad things happen so they can look and point and say, look, see? But what it, 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 it it's showing us, at least right now, is that it's not conclusive. Um, they're floating around the same deaths. I believe, like in Michigan, has a similar, as an example, has a similar population density, similar similar number of people that are there, um, in terms of Michigan, and they have about the same. There's like two thousand deaths. They have around the same. So, it's one of those things, and it makes sense, right? Like, did you really slow to like stop the spread? Uh, if it's as contagious as people have been anticipating. Did we really, or saying that it is, did we really stop it? Did the lockdown really actually stop anything when you consider that, yes, you're funneling all of these people to the Walmarts and these big box places who, believe it or not, aren't actually immune to these these viruses? So did you actually stop them? 
I guess that's a question that we'll we'll maybe be able to answer. But at the very minimum, and Johnny Anitas even said that toward the end of that perspectives video that dropped recently. I believe it dropped on my birthday on seventeen. And he was like, at the end of it, he was like, yeah, I believe that we need to we need to open open back up. Like he's well, he wants his data driven, but he wants it. He, he's like, we we need to open it back up because you know, certainly for younger parts of the population, they're more likely or just as likely to die from getting hit by. Or die, let's say, driving home from work as they are getting this and dying from it. Look, at bare minimum, at bare minimum, we know that it's not as deadly as they anticipate. Even the 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 like that was I H M E or I M E H, whatever the model out of University of Washington, the, the prominent model, which really popped all of this off. I mean, you had a lot of policy based on this where they were anticipating these thousands, uh, obviously, of deaths, and they have revised their models down. Now, the easy people are going to be like, you're probably going to see this even in the comment section. Well, this is proof that social di- this extreme social, social distancing is working. Incorrect. That model, for example, always included and, and took into account extreme social distancing. What they've been adjusting it and revising the numbers down in terms of the projected deaths has everything to do with the new data that they're getting from some of these other countries like Spain and Italy and so forth. And when they are seeing that it's not as deadly um, as anticipated and more so when the peak happened. So yeah, they always accounted for that, but they're still revising it down. It's almost like they, they initially uh, exaggerated. And I mean by, by, by literal terms, doesn't mean they, they did it with intent maybe, but it was at the bare, bare minimum, they were very exaggerated. We talked about that with the UK uh, numbers. Uh, what was that? The Imperial College saying that it was going to be 500,000 deaths, and now, now they're talking 20,000. Like, look, guys, at some point you got to concede that 22 or 26 now million people being put out of work isn't worth this. It's not worth the trade off. And the hilarious thing about all of this is that when people say they want to quote unquote reopen America or they want to ease some of these restrictions, they're not telling you to go outside. If you are scared and you do feel like this is doom and gloom, it's not force you outside. It's, let people assume the risk that they want to assume. And I have to address this. I know you've heard me say it, but when I every time I say that, there's someone like, well, you're assuming risk for other people because they may get other people sick. Dog, that's part of the risk of being a human being. That's what I mean when I say assume risk. Believe it or not, before this Modelo virus, Modelo viruses exist in the past. Uh, all kinds of virus, bacteria and germs and all sorts of stuff. That if you pass to the right, wrong or right person, depending on um, how you want to use it, if you pass it to that certain person, they may die from it. They may get severely sick and may be, be uh, needing to see hospital care. Okay? That has happened and it will continue to happen post this. Viral pneumonia is actually, I don't know why we talk, like, even with this, like, why people act like viral pneumonia is a new thing. And if it's not associated with influenza, it's no cure for it. And that exists right now and kills old people. Yeah, we accept that. We go about our lives. And maybe this will incentivize you to take more precautions. Be a little more hygienic. But come on. More, more and more evidence is coming out. We're seeing this for what it is. And it's okay to be like, okay, well, we took our precautions, but now it's we, we realized that it was a severe overreaction. We need to get back to doing, at least in some capacity, people having the freedom to do what they do what they like and assume whatever risk they like. And I'm gonna end on this: the goalposts, y'all gotta stop moving it. Y'all keep using these catchphrases such as flatten the curve, and flatten the curve had absolutely nothing to do with stopping people from getting infected they changed that they changed that they ch- y'all see how swift they switched that they switched that goal post fighting the curve has nothing to do with that fighting the curve was about spreading out the number of infected if you will or more so the people that are utilizing these hospital resources over a period of time because you want to keep it you have this medical 
standard medical resources that are available and you're trying to keep the number of people that need it under it so that they don't overwhelm the hospitals which isn't happening in most pl- most places even when it comes to those 26 million people being put out of work some of those are hospital workers by the way guys as a precaution makes a little it makes sense i'm not crapping on it for doing it just maybe didn't make a whole lot of sense economically for the long in the long term Evil Lady Ripper's Clinic, this has happened, where they don't do elective procedures, either by maybe a state mandated, maybe it's not, but they don't do it like elective procedures, preventative care, all that sort of stuff, stuff they can make money from. It is a business at the end of the day. They can't do it. Uh, or they're not, they, let's say they're not, they're not catering to those types. Therefore, that's money that they're not bringing in. And that influx, let's say, for example, in Texas, never happened that 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 overwhelming that that high number of a high volume of people that traffic it, it never came they're not making money but for a low on closing that's this is happening all across the country right now but anyway the post got shift the flatten the curve the phrase that you guys have thrown out so much had absolutely nothing to do with saving lives from the from the Modelo, maybe in, in in the case of, okay, people that if the hospital resource is unavailable, people may not, I, I, I get that. But from the infected, had nothing to do with it. Now, all of a sudden, the lockdowns are supposed to, like, exterminate the virus. We're going to be waiting forever for that. It's okay to admit you got it wrong to some capacity. It's okay. But it's not, though, you're like you're, you're, you're it's people's livelihoods that we're messing with here when we talk about that economic uncertainty that is happening across the country where people don't really know how they're going to be able to pay for it or get their next paycheck. Unemployment's coming late. Unemployment isn't coming. It's exhausting. $1,200 already that you thought you were going to get didn't really pan out to, to mean anything and, and, and all of this, like, it's okay to admit that you got it wrong. And that's a great thing. It's a positive thing that uh, it's not as bad as what they anticipated. Even the experts are saying this, right? The ones you told me to trust, they're even saying this. I feel for a lot of people. Remember, I talked about my own, uh, one of my revenue streams being completely derailed due to, due to this. But I actually feel for you guys that are out there trying to, that you've been working for these companies, wonderful companies that have treated you good. I have a guy told me the other day, eight years, and he got laid off. Right job that you enjoy, dream job. And just because, and it's not because people don't want to utilize your products or utilize the industry that you're in. It's that the state has effectively made it illegal for them to operate. And meanwhile, these these guys who have, this is what Johnny Anitas, I'm glad he was honest about it because Johnny Anitas was like, yeah, it's easy for me to practice this quote unquote social, like this social distancing, uh, these extreme measures. I live in this big house. I can separate from my, from my, from, from my daughter. That's what he was saying. But the average American can't do that. And when it comes to this, they shouldn't have to be forced to try or be put out of work. Y'all need to get a grip.